think maybe he, he knew too much about it. Yes. It might have been a situation where it's suicide, air quotes, conspiracy asylum. You can't see me, but I'm doing the air quotes, suicide. So, two shots to the back of the head. Worst case of suicide I've ever seen. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know how he died. He It just said suicide, so. The next, next suspect is Gary Howard Oliva, who had two counts of attempted sexual exploitation of a child charges in June of 2016. He also was a registered sex offender at the time of the murder, which was 10 years, 20 years before this. And do you think he went to that party that they were at? Do we know anything about that? No, he was not at that party. He just lived in the vicinity. Okay, so he was just in the generalized area. Yes. Okay. And in the vicinity of their house, there was, uh, within a two mile radius, there were 38 sex offenders. For them to be living in a rich neighborhood. That's weird. That is weird. That's weird. I feel like they'd be in a gated community. The thing is, is that they didn't need one in Boulder. Like, they, they didn't need a gated community just because everybody was fucking rich, as far as I can tell. But if you're listening to the Conspiracy Asylum and you live in Boulder, Colorado... Please feel comfortable and call our asses out. Yes, tell us. I'd love to know how Boulder, Colorado is. I've only been to, what was it, Westminster in Denver, and that's about it. I've never been, so I don't know. I went to Estes Park, too, which Estes Park is cool. Isn't that where the Stanley Hotel is? It is. We are completely off track. <laughs> yes, but that's where my friend got married. Who cares? This is a podcast. This is what we're supposed to do. If you don't like it, fucking suck it. Now, the next suspect, August 15th, 2006, John Mark Carr. This is probably the most famous suspect other than the Ramseys in this case. He had falsely confessed to the murder of Jean Benet when he was in Bangkok. He got arrested in Bangkok, Thailand after confessing to this. This was a CNN report. Now, CNN said that there was no evidence really tying him to it. And this guy was a 41-year-old school teacher. I don't know why he came out and said that he did this. Breaking rights. I don't know. He wasn't, he didn't really have a background or anything like that either. So it's, it's completely a mystery why this guy wanted to take credit for a murder he didn't do, but... People are fucking crazy, so, especially in the asylum. Now, here we go. Interesting stuff. On to the theories. Theories. Now, part. I've been told I've been saying this too much, but I'm going to say it one more time. The infamous theory of the intruder. An intruder broke in through a window in the basement of the Ramsey's home, snuck up the stairs, subdued John Bonet with a stun gun, which we've already proved isn't true, took her to the basement, killed her, and wrote a ransom note, wrote a practice note first, then the ransom note, all while everybody slept. Then they grabbed a suitcase, put it in front of the window that they snuck in, used the suitcase, leveraged themselves up through the window, and escaped all while leaving zero evidence of the, anybody being there. And he went in and out without any kind of utensils. He was there to kill somebody, but he didn't have anything to kill anybody with, with him. Now, the intruder theory was supported by Johnny Douglas, who happened to have been hired by the Ramses as a private investigator. Oh, wow. That doesn't sound fishy at all. Exactly. There were over 100 burglaries in the neighborhood of the Ramses in the mere months before the murder. So that kind of supported the intruder theory. But there wasn't anything taken from the home. So it wasn't a burglary. Once again, there were 38 registered sex offenders in a two-mile radius, which I don't know why they let that many people. I've heard that they try and gather them together. Like them in group homes. So you can just bomb the whole place and just kill all of them. They fucking smooth them. That's what they should do. Fucking cut their shit off. Then they're fucking smooth down there. The intruder theory was... There's not very many documentaries that actually support the intruder theory. But it was nice to know that there's actually one that explored it. And on A&E, on September 5th, 2016, the killing of Jean Benet Bramsey, The Truth Uncovered, aired. And this basically had clips of Lou Smith 
the guy that supported the theory that ended up coming out of retirement to investigate it and a year later later retiring again. That's him, convenient. Him going from the outside, showing people how you could sneak into the house and get out, basically. Now, the case of Jean Benet Ramsey, the one on CBS, they showed exactly what was wrong with what he did. And they kind of tore it apart. Now, like I said, go watch that. The case of Jean Benet Ramsey, CBS, very good documentary. All right, so basically that's all the things that really support the intruder theory, okay? And it's a lot of the circumstantial shit. It's a lot of circumstantial shit. Now, the family member theory, the infamous family oh member goodness. theory. I'm going to strangle you. <laughs> if he goes missing, guys, just saying. She's going to Burke Ramsey my ass. It never happened. She's going to stick a paintbrush in my ass. You'd look offended. I might like it. <laughs> oh, that's for another time. My boyfriend does it all the time anyway. All right, I digress. Family member theory. The main suspects for the theory are Jean, not Jean, but John Ramsey, Patsy Ramsey, and Burke the Devil Child Ramsey. The first and the most popular theory is that Jean Benet had a bedwetting problem, which that was proven. She had a bedwetting problem, and she wet the bed, and Patsy Ramsey lost her shit and accidentally threw her against the tub, cracked her head open. She panicked, made it look like an intruder came in, tied her up. They staged the whole thing. Regardless, she had to cover it up. This is another warning, and I'm actually being very serious about this. If you're easily offended... If you're easily grossed out. If you're easily triggered. If you're easily triggered by stuff. This is a trigger warning. It's 2018. I probably already triggered plenty of fucking people by saying, calling John Benet Ramsey a she. How do you know she identified as a girl? <laughs> Other than that. All right. So very, very seriously, it gets really dark right here. Gets really fucked up. So if you're easily triggered turn it the fuck off i don't even care at this point like i've told all you guys i do this for fun i like doing it i can really care less if somebody has something bad to say about me but i do not want to straight up offend somebody just because i want to that's just mean but all right so here we go the second and probably the most disturbing theory is that patsy ramsey walked in on john ramsey having sex with john benet not just having sex with her, but having weird fucking sex with her. And then she loses her shit, like any sane person would, grabs a golf club, and tries to hit John with the golf club, but misses and accidentally hits John Bonet in the head. And then after that, they cover it up so it doesn't look like that they killed their child. Yeah, I feel like that'd be grounds for divorce, though, if that really was something that happened. Right, exactly. Which, we'll go over all this we're almost done with the theories here. There's also the possibility that John accidentally killed Jean Bonnet during sex, which is really disturbing. And John Ramsey is still alive. And if he really didn't have anything to do with this, I am just going over what all the theories are that are out there. If that wasn't the case there, that's it would be really fucked up for people to come at him like that if that's his daughter and he really loved his daughter and from all accounts it did really look like he loved his daughter this shit is fucked up one of the newer theories though is that burke got mad at john benet after john benet well let's set the scene here hold on burke was downstairs in the middle of the night having his favorite snack pineapples and milk like you would do cereal so like he'd put the pineapples in there and he put milk over it which is, it's like pineapples and cream. A lot of people do do that. And he had a glass of tea. One of the theories is that Jean Benet got up in the middle of the night also, also hungry, runs downstairs and sees Burke eating pineapples. And as any annoying little sister would, she came up and snatched a pineapple right out of the bowl and ate it. And as she was eating it, Burke lost control, grabbed the flashlight, which it was, it was right on the kitchen counter, only steps away from this bowl of pineapples and milk and whaps her in the head which the fracture on her head does line up with a mag light flashlight if you know what a mag light flashlight is it's a heavy 
fucking flashlight. That thing will kill somebody if you really try. And keep in mind that he did just hit her in the head with a, what, a golf club, what, a year and a half before? Yeah, he's a, he's completely capable of doing that. You know, and maybe he thought last time, well, she was just fine, so I didn't hit her that hard. Exactly. No, that's, I wouldn't put it past him. But he hits her on the head. John and Patsy wake up to Burke telling them what happened. They find out that she is dead or really close to dead and they stage it downstairs. The sick part about all this is that regardless, they know that the paintbrush handle went inside of her. So if that's the case, then that means one of those family members stuck the paintbrush inside of her, which is fucking disgusting. Another theory, which is another Burke theory. Now it's Burke luring John Bonet downstairs to the basement to molest her because they said there was signs of light sexual assault that had taken place before the day of the murder. He lures her downstairs, enticing her with the pineapple. He hits her on the head with the flashlight and once again, John and Patsy Ramsey come and cover it up. So those are basically the theories for what happened. All right, so now the time has come. We've heard all of the evidence. We've seen everything. We're in the asylum. You've taken your medicine. <laughs> You've been given your drugs. You've been issued your straight jacket. You're sitting in your padded cell. You're listening to all this bullshit. You got to listen to my voice for what's going to be probably about an hour and a half. Now it's time for our theory. At least my theory. And then Kim can give her theory after I'm done. All right, this is how I'm going to set it up. It's pretty much a toss up between John and Patsy Ramsey accidentally killing her daughter and covering it up and Burke doing something to her and then covering it up. Either way, it involves a cover-up. What I truly believe happened in my heart of hearts is that Burke was eating pineapples and milk with some tea downstairs. This is after they had been put to bed and it was somewhere around 12 a.m. when the neighbor had noticed that the light was on. So that indicates that somebody was up. So most likely it was Burke eating his midnight snack. Now, the bowl that Burke was eating out of only had Burke's fingerprints on it and Patsy's fingerprints on it. So that's a very important point because in my theory here, Jean Benet comes up, snatches a pineapple, eats it. Because remember, she had pineapple in her stomach that was not digested all the way. So she ate it only an hour or so before she died. And then after she eats the pineapple, Burke loses control. He smacks her with the flashlight. And then he runs upstairs to tell John and Patsy Ramsey what happened. As John brings her body downstairs and starts to stage it, Patsy is upstairs writing first the practice note, then the ransom note, staging it all, which... John and Patsy Ramsey were wearing the same clothes they were the day before when the cops showed up, which is weird for them. And her makeup was all done. So that means that she had not just gotten up. That's another very important point. But Patsy wrote the note. John brought the body, at the very least brought the body downstairs and left it in that room. Now, I believe when he went missing that day, he went missing for over an hour. I think that's where he went. He went downstairs to completely stage the body because they figured writing the ransom note would make them look outside the house. But now it looked like they were going to tell them to search the house. So he had to make it look like Jean Benet had been killed by somebody. So that hour and a half he was gone, I believe he was staging the scene, making it look like an intruder actually did this. Regardless of their intentions, John and Patsy Ramsey are horrible people for this. I can understand trying to protect your son, but who knows if he's going to do some shit like this later in life. You may be putting other people in danger, and all you can think about is your own selfish feelings. My opinion is Burke Ramsey is guilty of murder, most likely sexually assaulted his sister earlier in their life, up until this point. That's that's my theory. Burke did it. That's why I've been calling him the devil child the whole time. And I think he did it. I don't, I mean, it's, like I said, it's pretty much a toss up between it was an accident and John and Patsy accidentally killed her and Burke killing her. So, what do you think, Kim? Yeah, I totally think that Burke is completely guilty. So, uh, I could totally see the, what you're saying there. Um, I could see Burke getting up at midnight, you know, having his pineapple or whatever, and, you know, being about nine year old and being the oldest child, you know, having an annoying little sister run down the stairs and see what you're doing in the middle of the night when you shouldn't even be up. 
you know, I might do your either holding the bowl of pineapple or whatever. I mean, I, I'm, I'm an annoying little sister, so I've always, you know, ate off my sister's plates. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't even need to touch it. Just dig in the bowl, grab what you want, and run. And whatever this is, it must have really enraged him. And I could understand with, you know, my son having autism, how easy it is for the little switch to flip and mm-hmm. go from just fine to instant rage. We got to-